Good morning everyone, Children's Librarian Alicia here, and welcome back to another video where I recommend children's books that you can read online while the library is closed, suggest activities that you can do at home, and tell bad jokes. And um, today I am recommending books about cute animals, because who doesn't love cute animals? Um, I was inspired by the Easter Bunny's visit, let's just say. Our joke today is, what happens to a frog's car when he parks in the wrong spot? He gets towed. So our first book today is a really fun one, and it's called Sloth at the Zoom by Helene Becker. You can read this book on Tumble Books, and it's a really sweet picture book about a sloth who thinks she's going to the zoo, but she actually ends up being delivered to the Zoom. And the Zoom, as you might guess from the name, is a place full of really, really speedy animals. Um, so a sloth is a little bit out of place. Um, it's really not her style, and she tries to make friends, but has a lot of trouble because nobody has any time for her. They're all rushing around, but she does eventually find someone who is more her speed. Um, so this is a really cute book about just slowing down and enjoying the little things every so often, which is kind of a good message for us grown-ups as well sometimes, so I highly recommend that one. The next book I'd like to recommend also has a speedy animal featuring prominently. It's called A Greyhound, a Groundhog by Emily Jenkins. And this is a very simple book. It doesn't really have much of a plot. Um, it's just a greyhound and a groundhog zooming around the pages, playing round and round and round and round and round. Um, <laughs> But it's just a fun book to read. It'll go by really quickly, but it's fun and it's kind of a tongue twister um, because the round little groundhog and the greyhound play round and round and round, and uh, you'll eventually start saying things like roundhog as you try to trip over the words a little bit. So it's just fun to read, and the pictures are really cute with the greyhound and the groundhog. Um, we don't have this book in our online ebook collections, but you can watch the author read the book on YouTube. So there's a link in the description of this video and you can see Emily Jenkins read the book to you from her own living room. Our next book is an easy chapter book um, by Alana Arnold titled A Boy Called Bat. And no, the book is not about bats. <laughs> Um, it is actually about a skunk. So you can read this book on Freeding or on Library to Go, where it is also available as an audiobook, so you could listen to it as well. Bat is a young boy whose mom is a veterinarian, and one day she brings home a baby skunk that was found, and they need to take care of it at home for a little while while the skunk grows big enough to be um, uh, returned to a wildlife sanctuary. Um, but Bat just falls in love with the baby skunk, and he really, really doesn't want um, to have to give the skunk up at the end of the month. So he starts plotting about how he might be able to keep the skunk and convince his mom to let them keep it as a pet for a bit longer. So this is a, it's a funny and touching novel for kids who are um, reading easier chapter books, sort of around the six to nine year old age range. And uh, I think a lot of kids will also really relate to Bat, um, who's on the autism spectrum, but he um, encounters a lot of really um, common challenges that a lot of kids face at school and at home with their siblings and their parents. Um, so I highly recommend this one. It's really great. It was one of the Reading Link Challenge books last year, so a lot of grade four and five students read this as part of that program, and I heard great reviews from all the kids who participated. Our last book is for older readers, so more your grade five, six, uh, and up, called Pandas on the East Side 
by Gabriel Pendergast. And um, you can read this one on Tumble Books. And it takes place in the 1970s in Vancouver on the downtown east side. So it's got a very local connection. It features a 10 year old girl named Journey who lives in the downtown east side with her mom. And when she hears that two pandas are being held in a warehouse at the port of Vancouver, she worries that they will be hungry and cold and lonely, and she wants to help them. They're on their way to Washington um, to go to a zoo, but there's a, a, been a diplomatic spat between the US and China, and so the pandas are kind of stranded at the port with nowhere to go. So Journey rallies her friends and her neighbors to try to help the pandas in any way she can, um, and soon a whole host of characters are ready to help her out. Um, this is a really, it's a touching story with a very likable main character. Journey is really enthusiastic about the pandas and it's just infectious. You can really tell how much she loves them. Um, the book also deals with poverty and addiction and homelessness in a way that is accessible to kids, but it's frank. Um, she, the author doesn't sugarcoat or romanticize anything about these issues. And I really appreciated that she shows homeless and marginalized people as real human beings with complex personalities and lives who are not defined by their circumstances. So even for that reason alone, I really recommend this book for pretty much everybody, even adults. Read this book if you're an adult. It's a great story. So our activity for today is one that you can hopefully make with something um, that you might normally throw out, which is egg carton animals. So what you'll need is an egg carton or even just part of one, um, some paper or cardboard to make legs and tails and ears and uh, arms or other parts of the animal that might stick out and some glue to stick everything together and markers to decorate. So you don't need too much here. Um, if you have googly eyes or other craft supplies lying around the house, you can really go hog wild and make something really crazy. Um, pipe cleaners um, can be fun too, um, but you definitely don't need them to make something. So I will put some links in the description of this video to give you some ideas, so some pictures of different things you can make. Um, and if you make one, let us know what you made. I'm really curious to find out. So I hope that gives you some ideas and we will see you tomorrow. Bye.